Hello, Patchogue Medford family. I'm Michael Hines, Superintendent of Schools for the Patchogue Medford School District. For the past year and a half, the Board of Education and I have had a laser-like focus on truly augmenting the skill sets that are with our students and looking to engage community members in the sole purpose of energizing and transforming our school district. And I'm happy to say, uh, after a year and a half of being here, we are certainly moving in the right direction. Some of the things I'm about to share with you are pretty significant because it counters much of what has transpired uh, in regard to Albany as far as uh, shifts in what is deemed most important for kids. And what I mean by that is the over-testing of our students, certainly the, uh, the curriculum that's attached to it. And what we want to do here in Patchogue Medford is to truly focus on swinging that pendulum back from an over-testing nation back to uh, a nation of what is best for kids as far as looking at the whole child. And so what I am proposing for our staff and to the Board of Education and really to the school community are some significant shifts for the 2016-2017 school year. So what I'd like to do is start with our elementary school. And actually before I do that, I want to quickly say to understand the whole child, we must first understand the stages of development. And to me, that's one of the, uh, the cruxes of making sure we do understand the whole child, is understanding where a child begins as far as the development's concerned, and certainly where it ends and what those stages are in between. And the only way we can do that is by focusing on one thing and one thing only, and that's the relationships that we have with our students. Whether someone's working in the classroom directly, uh, whether someone's serving uh, food uh, in the cafeteria, if someone is driving our students to school and certainly back to home, security, whatever the capacity of, of our wonderful uh, Patrick Menford family and how they interact with our kids, it really comes down to relationships. So let's start with elementary and what those shifts look like uh, as we start moving forward in the 2016-17 school year. What I am proposing is that we increase structured and unstructured play for all K through 2 students. That is a seismic shift as far as what's happened with, I will say, not only New York State but probably the United States is uh, our kindergarten, I will say our primary school children just um, losing the love of learning and playing. You know, for some people play is um, the highest form of learning but it seems that it's creeped away over the past 10, 15 years, and what we need to do here is bring it back. So in kindergarten, I propose an hour and a half more a day of structured, unstructured play. In first grade, I'm looking for one hour more than what we currently have, and certainly in second grade, we're looking for a half hour more. The second thing I'd like to propose is that we are looking to increase wraparound services for our kindergarten through fifth grade students. And what I mean by that is we need to increase the social workers that we have within our schools and the way that they interact with our families and also to address the psychological needs that our students have via other supports. And I've said this many times to our Patchogue Medford community, the only way our students will increase their love of learning and certainly the byproduct of that is student achievement is to make sure we look at the three prongs, the social, emotional, and certainly the academic growth. We need to focus on the social, emotional right now. What I also propose is that we increase recess in kindergarten through fifth grade by 20 minutes per day. We are looking to introduce yoga and meditation for all of our K through five students. We have piloted some of that already this year and the feedback has been tremendous and I'm very happy and thankful for that. So we will be piloting uh, and, and actually introducing yoga and meditation. Also looking for a year long push in the regular classroom with teacher support. And that is truly one of the things um, that I find one of the most important things for students to succeed is to make sure that they have the coping mechanisms of all the stresses that happen throughout the day. And my hope, uh, of course, is that our uh, educators and anybody who's affiliated in the schools, they learn from that as well. And then one of the, the interesting edges that I think, uh, I don't know if many school districts do this, but we will do it here because I truly believe in this, is the elementary staff training on the big four as far as psychologists are concerned. And what I mean by that, we're, we're going to um, look at professional development for um, any staff member that works here with Abraham Maslow, uh, 
Piaget, Erickson, and Kohlberg. So whether it's the stages of cognitive development, whether it's moral development, whether it um, has to do with just the basic needs of what one needs to be successful, all staff members will have professional development working on the, the, the big four, and that will take place throughout the whole year next year. And I'm hoping that we will be working with the local university to assist us with that. As we move on to the middle school, pretty much what I just outlined for elementary school will mirror what I'm thinking for, element, uh, for middle school as well. Looking to increase structured, unstructured play for, that's right, sixth through eighth graders. They need it just as much as our elementary students need it too. And the, the trick will be how do we design this and what does it look like? And that's a conversation for another day. Again, increasing the wraparound services for our sixth or eighth graders. It is so important that our sixth or eighth graders, our middle school um, students, have what they need as far as to be effective, uh, not only in the classroom, but to have those social emotional needs met by uh, professional staff member and working with families for resources. We are looking to integrate ELA and social studies and math and science to have a true integration of curriculum. There is, as we know, a brother-sister relationship uh, between math and science and the same thing for social studies and language arts. What we're looking for that um, is to have uh, integrated curricular project-based learning activities and I just want to say that also will take place at the elementary school as well. So. In the elementary school, we will have those types of opportunities for project-based learning activities that are integrated, and it's the same thing for the middle school. Again, introducing and piloting uh, yoga and meditation for our sixth through eighth grade students. And then finally, making sure anybody who interacts with students is uh, introduced to the big four, and uh, as far as uh, training for stages of, of development. And again, that's with Maslow, Piaget, Erickson, and Kohlberg. As we move on to the high school, and I will finish with the high school at this point, um, one of the things I've noticed over time is um, the lack of uh, student participation in activities in school. Now, we have a significant amount of students, but for students, and the research shows this, if they're not connected with the school in some way, um, not only do the academics um, suffer from that, but they're all also uh, more likely to, to engage in behaviors that we don't want to see our students uh, engaging in. So we want to increase student participation in co-curricular activities by 10%. We're also to look at drug prevention uh, focus for assemblies, uh, to have club activities, and certainly for forums for our community. Um, our guidance department, which does an outstanding job, especially thinking about the caseloads that they have, which can uh, almost tip at 300 students per guidance counselor. Uh, one of the things that we need to be cognizant of is that contact time with students. And so what we're looking to do, um, and we need to structure this the right way, is to make sure that every single one of our students at the high school meets with uh, a professional guidance counselor at least one time a semester. That is critically important. And then finally, the last edge that we'll be introducing uh, to the high school is some sort of dissertation uh, project for seniors. Now, if seniors are hearing this right now, they may be holding their ears. Um, but I will say one of the things that I find most important for all of our students at some point is to have some sort of presentation, uh, a presentation in front of a panel of professionals. And what we're looking for them to articulate and report back on is their most significant learning as a student here whether they've been here from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade or maybe they transferred in at some point, maybe in middle school or elementary school. But it's important for us, for students, to, to point out some of the most significant learnings that have taken place since they've been here, and they will articulate that. The second is I want our students to give us, the school district, recommendations in order for us to augment what we currently have right now. To have recommendations from our students in real time is truly critical. And then finally, I want them to articulate what their goals are over the next four years, whether they go into the workforce, whether they decide to join the military, and or, of course, go to college. And I'm looking forward to having that conversation and to framing that out and to make sure that we give our students all the best opportunities that we can. When you take this philosophical shift and you parallel this or you actually marry it, with the pillar work that's going on right now for our road to success, our five-year strategic plan. I'm going to tell you right now, Patrick Medford is really on the cusp of something 
just transformational. Uh, any questions or concerns uh, that you have, please contact me via email, certainly the phone, or just stop by my office, and I'd be more than happy to talk to you about it. Thank you.